British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams. Hello Manchester, I'm Lisa Leyland. I'm here at the British Gas Swimming Championship 2011. We're here at the Manchester Aquatic Centre, uh, but to get us more in the mood, take a look at this. It's day one of the British Gas Swimming Championships, which are also doubling up as trials for several top internationals during the year, with the highlight this summer when Shanghai hosts the Worlds. There are two championship finals to look forward to this evening, and they are both over 400 metres. The women's clash brings together an extremely talented lineup, headed by double Olympic champion Becky Adlington, Olympic bronze medalist Joe Jackson, the World Open Water champion Kerry Ann Payne, European 400m IM champion Anna Miley, and double Commonwealth medalist Jasmine Carlin. What a juicy encounter this promises to be! In the men's eight lap tussle, only one second separates the finalists after their qualifying round swim this morning. Scotland's Lewis Smith will start in lane four as the fastest, but the most impressive PB in the lineup is held by fellow Scot Robbie Renwick, who qualified fourth. Whilst the podium will be visited for those two contests, it's semi-final time in the women's 100 meters butterfly and 200 meters individual medley. And the men will be teeing themselves up when they race over the 50 meters fly and 100 meters breaststroke. My pick of the semis is the women's two length fly dash. Ellen Gandhi has posted a number of very fast times in Australia where she's based. As fastest qualifier earlier today, the legacy of jet lag was not evident. In the mix, as fourth fastest qualifier, is sprint queen Francesca Halsall, tackling her first serious competitive swim since undergoing surgery on her ankle. To guarantee a place in the medal race, a sub 60 second swim could well be the cutoff. Four multi-class events will also be decided. This is the first of two meets where the swimmers can put markers down for the European Championships, which take place in Berlin during July. In the S7 400 meter freestyle this morning, Jonathan Fox racked up 976 points to go close to the world record. But the intriguing battle is likely to come from the S8 category, where the world record holder and current Paralympic champion Sam Hine will be out for revenge against Tom Young, who won last year's world championship in Hines absence into the turn and the final 50. We don't charge for applause here if you want to get behind the swimmers. Concluding 50 now then for Massey. Can she put the British record under pressure? It's 215.9. Little bit of support, might just see her raising a game to pressurise that mark. Coming up to the red centre marker here, 25 to go. Massey it is, still cutting the pace out here, finding the good rhythm. The rest are completely blown away. 15 metres then to wrap it up. Heading towards the red markers in the final five. The British record looks to be out of reach, but it's going to be a good time. Here she comes. Massey will win the first race of the night. There's the time for you, 217.92. And that's only 16,100 shy of a lifetime best. Second is Chloe Selman, Doncaster Dots. And Selman coming in there with a finishing time, 226.67. And the third spot just being booked there by Chloe, uh, by uh, Stephanie Bird, 230.65. Thanks for that, Hugh. We've got Natalie waiting in the wings here. Um, Natalie, congratulations. <laughs> You've actually qualified for uh, the championships. How are you feeling? Uh, real happy, qualified. Um, at the Europeans, that's where my biggest rival is because I've got two Dutch girls, so it's good to race them. Looking forward to it. So you're happy with, you're looking forward to the rest of the week then, I guess? Yeah. Great start. <laughs> yeah, good start. Got 100 back and 100 rest to come, but I did want the British record then, but I'll just have to wait to the Europeans. So Pepper is a prodigious talent here. He's now eroding the slight advantage that Proctor had set up and now looking to the turn. Here he comes, Pepper will just about turn, heading ahead of Proctor. And now then, can he distance himself away from the early pace setter? These two now beginning to go clear from the rest of the field. 15 metres wiped away in the uh, 50 here to bring them back to the wall. Proctor showing stubborn resistance through the mid marker. But it's Pepper at the moment, really digging deep here and looking for that extra power. A body length nearly is the advantage. Pepper breathing to the right and looking at Proctor. Final five, what's he going to stop the clocker? Not the British record, but it's good enough for victory. There it is, Pepper stops the clock on 
5.23. That is inside the uh, qualification time for the Europeans by over two seconds. So we can uh, join Lisa now, who I think has got the winner, Daniel Pepper, with her. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Hugh. I do have Dan here. Dan, make your way in here. <laughs> um, you qualified for Beijing. Great start. Uh, for Beijing? Berlin. Berlin, there you go, yeah. Uh, yeah, qualified for Berlin there, so also just really pleased and, you know, just hoping to progress on to there now. And what was going through your mind throughout that race? Um, I've got to admit, turn at 15 and thought, oh, that's harder than it should have been. But then, obviously, I just had Ben next to me, so we just yeah. kind of paced off each other and, you know, finished hard. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty close by the end. He got a bit, bit too much of a lead on me at uh, 100, so... I had to work hard to catch him up, but it's all right. Oh, well, thanks for chatting to us. Thanks for that, Dan. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations there to Dan. Right now, the next event is the Women's Open 100m Butterfly Semi-Final. Well, this is semi-final number one for the Women's 100m Butterfly. The British record holder, Francesca Halsell, swimming out of lane five. This is her first serious competitive swim since uh, she underwent surgery for her ankle. But it was uh, Rachel Kelly who went well as well in uh, lane three, the 17-year-old from Royal Wolverhampton School. And, of course, Gemma Lowe in lane four from Swansea Performance. Split time. Let's take a look at that. 27.66. British record is still safe, but uh, down in the middle of the pool now, it's Halsell going strongly in lane five under pressure from Gemma Lowe up there in lane four. And it's Lowe then at the moment with the advantage. Looking for the wall here and the touch. Remember, we're looking for the eight finalists then for tomorrow. It's the eight quickest that'll make it through. Lowe gets it on the touch. 59.19. Rachel Kelly, this youngster who's studying at the Royal Wolverhampton School, coming in second on 59.91. And third, Francesca Halsell, the British record holder, 60.12. But it's Sylvester at the moment that's looking pretty good. And also uh, looking strong in lane six is Jessica Dickons of Edinburgh University. These are the three at the moment that are come on in the lead. But now it's Gandhi. That suntan figure of Gandhi that is uh, based down there in Melbourne, just back from a training camp up there on the Sunshine Coast, and she's literally flying down the pool. Here she comes. She's got a personal best of 57.49. Let's have a look at the clock. Good time by Gandhi, 58.33. Well, Gandhi is the fastest of the qualifiers, and uh, I think she's certainly underlined that sensational preparation she's having down under there in Australia. Rest of the times you can see, second quickest is Sylvester from Nova Centurion. There's a time on 59.69. And third, Tilly Gray coming in on 60.73. But uh, Gandhi, very quick indeed, much faster than the rest of the opposition. Just uh, 25 metres to go in the penultimate 50. It's going to be a phenomenal concluding wire 50, this. Looking for the wall. The strokes are starting to uh, increase now as they come to the turn. 50 metres remaining. Looks like lane five is going to do it. Six, in fact, Renwick, fastest man in the field for the first time, gets the head of the race. Renwick using his wealth of experience here to try and blow the opposition away. Sprint is now starting and it's Renwick bringing that powerful leg kick into action. And Renwick now taking command of the contest up to the final five. Lloyd's coming through as well for second, but it's going to be Renwick. Here he comes. Renwick takes it. Finishing time shown at 351.90. And second with that very spirited concluding 50, Yayan Lloyd, City of Cardiff. Closing out there on a time of 3.52.62. That's a lifetime best then for Lloyd. He'll be well pleased with that. And third, Joshua Walsh. Walsh coming in for third. And Walsh's time shown on the board at 3.52.74. And that's a lifetime best also for Walsh. <laughs> Robbie, congratulations. You came back really, really strong there in that last length. Yeah, no, um, I knew to win the race. It was, uh, it was all about the back half there. And uh, my main focus this week is the... 200 freestyle so uh, to get the 400 here is a bonus and hopefully we can keep that going for the rest of the week distancing herself just ahead of the rest but still looking pretty good is uh, Sophie Smith in three all about time this 
It's a time trial. You versus the clock to try and get into that top eight and make it through for tomorrow's final. Final 50 then here in semi-final number one. Anna Miley's British record, which was set in Rome, is 209.46. But I tell you what, she's going to try and keep something back because she's going to appear later in the program. She's in the final of the 400 later. But it's Miley now. Here she comes and still being doggedly pursued here by Smith as they tidy up semi-final number one. Let's have a look at the clock. 2.13.83. Good time there by Miley, 2.14.6 then for Smith. So it's all building very nicely here for a charge down the final 50 to see who wants to seal semi-final number two. Now then, looking for the wall, concluding five, here they come. Who's going to turn first? Clock will tell us. It's Wilmot. Wilmot now has rescued the lead back in this tussle in semi-final number two. It's in a real angry mood now, this race. Lane 8 also going well here. Kate Hutchinson, coached by Ian Armiger in uh, Loughborough, also having a tilt at a possible place in the final. Look at this then, right in the middle of the pool. It's Wilmot in five, distancing herself from the rest. A body length advantage. Second coming through in lane three is Saunders, but it'll be Wilmot. Wilmot takes it. 215.15 for Wilmot. Just shy of her personal best. Good swimming there. Second, Emma Saunders in 216.14. Personal best time for Saunders. Now, as this is a, a, a non-Olympic event, there is no qualification time. But uh, if they enter somebody into this, then, of course, they will enter them from the team. So they're all in a line here. Difficult to pick a winner, isn't it? Looks like lane five going well. James Doolan, City of Salford. Yep, Doolan takes it, 24.45. So good time there by Doolan. Just shy of his lifetime best. Second to touch the wall was Geoffrey Short. Bishops Stortford, 24.86. And third, Harry Needs. Now, whilst Jack Marriott in lane four is the quickest qualifier, keep an eye out for Anthony James in lane six. The Plymouth Leander swimmer came away from New Delhi in the Commonwealth Games with two medals. Midway point, the whole field in the shake-up here. But it's looking like lane six, Anthony James, the man I earmarked, going pretty strongly down the pool here. Also in the middle, looking good in lane four, is Marriott on the touch. Let's have a look at it. It's James. James takes it then for Plymouth Leander. And James's time, 24.44. Carlin going well as well here, easing herself up into the silver medal position. Final 50, you're looking at the double Olympic champion. And it is Becky Adlington coming up to the red marker, 25 to go. Let's hear it then for Adlington. Behind the contest for silver, he's being won at the moment by Jasmine Carlin, who's really finding extra power in the closing stages. And the bronze at the moment, looking to be going to carry on Payne. But here comes Adlington. Adlington touches now. What a time. 4-0, That is some time then by... Becky Adlington, who wins the 400 meter freestyle. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that time of 4.02.84 is the third best ever on the British all time comers list. So, Adlington just showing the kind of class she's got. Hey, right, I've got Becky here, another world class swim. What are your thoughts on that? I was so pleased with that swim. It was such a difficult race. Just. Been ill this week and just had a few niggles, but I just wanted to get in there and just do my best and yeah. just try and get involved in the race as much as I can and to do that time. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. That's kind of what I did in Beijing and to get back down to that is unbelievable, especially in now textile suits. It's just so nice. Semi-final number one gets underway here then for the men's 100 metre breaststroke. Chris Gilchrist swimming in lane four is the Scottish record holder, but he was upstaged in New Delhi, actually, by Michael Jameson. J Jameson uh, got the better there of the Scottish record holder, Gilchrist, when he was fourth in the 100. And Jameson, of course, came away from New Delhi with a silver in the greater distance over 200. 
And at the moment, it's Jameson that's uh, leading Gilchrist by 15 one hundredths of a second as they now make their way back down this second uh, 50. Top eight, remember, you know the drill by now. It's the top eight times that will go into the final. And it's the brace of Scots here that are cutting the pace out. Jameson in five, Gilchrist in four, lane one coming through with a late rush as well. Doug Scott, let's have a look at it on the board. Jameson hangs on to that lead. Uh, Daniel Slowinski in lane seven from Preston's the only man in the field to have gone inside the one minute barrier for this event. But that, of course, was when the suits were in. In the Commonwealth Games in New Delhi, he came away with a bronze medal in the 50 and the 100. So the finalist in that 50 and 100 and the bronze medal winner in the relay, Slowinski trying to replicate those times he used to put down when the suits were in. So the pace setter here is Andrew Willis. Willis in lane five of Bracknell, turning there on 29.19. The time to beat to be the fastest qualifier is 61.6, set by Michael Jameson. Well, it's a cracker of a heat, this, isn't it? Four swimmers almost in a line here, looking to try and claim the victory. Which way is the pendulum going to swing? Which one's going to cover themselves in glory? It looks like lane four might take it, Russell Smith. Let's have a look. Willis, in fact, takes it. 62.14. She's carved out a handsome lead here, Watkin, from the S9 category. And in the same category is Lauren Stedman in lane eight. So they are the two leading swimmers here in this multi-class 400-meter freestyle final. Split time for Watkin, 340.73. As they're beginning to polish off the uh, the rest of the distance now. Ellie Simmons on her way down as well. Simmons coming up for that turn. S6 category, remember, for Simmons. Personal best for her on 527.64. <coughs> this will be the turn then for the leader. Going further and further away from the field here then. Watkin representing the city of Salford. 35 metres remaining here for the leader. So that's the first time we're going to look at a match-up against the standards. And then we're going to have to wait, of course, to see what kind of points they will have amassed. Now then, what about a nice little round of applause for the leader here? Louise Walking in lane four. Nobody to challenge her. Nearest to her will be Stedman in eight, who's also from the S9 category. But Watkins, the first swimmer home. And Watkins' time gives her 716 points. So she's going to have to wait and see. Great start to the week for you. Yeah, it's a good start. Like this morning in the heat, I didn't do that well. So I was coming and I didn't feel that good. So coming into the final, going 531, a few seconds off my world record is yeah. really good. And what are your hopes for the Europeans now then? Well, I'm hoping to just do my best in Europeans, hopefully regain my titles and just swim well. It's going to take a mighty effort by Young then to erode the lead that Hine has established. It's not much, but Young, the world champion, looks as though he wants to try and get the better of Hine, the world record holder. Final 50 now then for Wellborn. We don't mind if you show your appreciation here for Wellborn. Heading towards the red marker and 25 to go. He's got a lifetime best Wellborn of 407.05. Not going to threaten that, but he's certainly going to put down a reasonable time. Coming up to the concluding five. And the fight behind then for the S6, S8 category between Young and Hind is beginning to unfold, as I said. There's Wellborn's time for 13.43. Thanks for that, Hugh. Our final little interview for this evening. I've got Sam here. Sam, how was that time compared to your heats this morning? Uh, pretty much the same as the heats this morning, um, but still a good solid swim. So, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So, did you enjoy the race? I really enjoyed it, yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to be back. So, uh, after a couple of months' work, it's, it's good to build on that and see what we can get now leading into the Europeans. And in terms of the crowd, they've been great here in Manchester, haven't they? They have, yeah. It, they've been fantastic. They've been really supportive. So, just want to say a big thank you to everyone.
British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams.